Um, like I said, I'm a student here at McGill. I'm in IDS, minor in education. And um, I spent the past uh, four years actually working with an NGO called Amigos de las Americas, uh, working in Central America. They've sent me into the field three times. The first time was when I was 17. And um, so I've lived twice in Honduras, once in Nicaragua, um, as well as doing some work with them in the States and in the communities I've been living with um, in the States. So today I'm going to talk about project evaluation, which is a very thrilling topic. Um, and I'm going to talk about it in, in a sense that um, we're, we're kind of doing it the wrong way, I think. And one of the big things that we need to focus on is how we're interacting with the people that um, are in the communities that, that are doing the projects that we're evaluating, and if we're really forming the right um, types of relationships with them. Um, so I just talked about this, my background. Um, and the three times that I've worked with this organization, I've worked twice as a volunteer, so I've been um, had more of like the immersion experience. I've been living in a community for um, about two months. I've lived with a host family. Um, I've been working with local youth and community members. We've done community-based initiatives, started youth groups, done various projects. Um, and then this past summer, I was working as a field project supervisor, which means that I was supervising volunteers that were doing the same thing that I had been doing. Um, about nine volunteers in four different communities. And one of the biggest parts of, of my job as a supervisor was project evaluation. So this was going back into the communities at the end of the summer um, after the volunteers had been working there and the, with the, the local youth and saying, okay, did we do a good job? Um, if not, what can we improve? And compared to my experiences actually living in the community as a volunteer, I, I was getting very frustrated because I didn't feel like um, in the meetings that I was having with people, I didn't feel like I was getting the real story. I didn't feel like people were telling me what was really going on behind the scenes. And um, as a supervisor, you go into the communities about once a week. So you'll spend one night a week in each community that you're supervising. So I, you know, I formed bonds with people, but I really hadn't formed really strong relationships with them. And I'm sitting, I'm sitting in the last community that um, I was doing an evaluation in, and we're all sitting in like a big circle in the classroom, and there's teachers there, there's um, the mayor from the region, uh, there's representatives from the two host families that my two volunteers were living with, um, there's representatives from local youth groups, and everybody has two post-it notes. Um, the evaluation was being uh, facilitated by a teacher in the community, and I was kind of observing and helping out. So on one post-it note, they're supposed to draw um, or write, depending you know, if they're illiterate or, or want to write or whatever, something that they really enjoyed about working with Amigos, with our organization. And then on the other post-it note, they were supposed to draw or write something that they feel could have been improved or that we could have done differently so that the next year when we go back into this community to work again, we can hopefully do a better job. And uh, one of my volunteers' host fathers was um, spent like 25 minutes on this one post-it note. He's drawing this picture, and he gave it to me at the end of the meeting. And um, and I'm like frustrated. I feel like I haven't been getting any feedback. You know, nobody's giving me any constructive feedback for sure. Nothing, nothing negative at all. And he had drawn a picture of the volunteer that I had placed in his home um, playing with his children. So that to me was the first moment where I was really like. You know, these volunteers, especially in this specific community, had, with the local youth, had done so much. They created gardens, they created um, a trash and recycling center, they'd been working really hard. And the biggest thing that he had gotten out of working with his organization was the relationship that he had formed with the volunteer in his house and um, the relationship that she had formed with his children. Um, so, keeping that in mind, uh, bringing this back to what this conference is about, which is economic development. I think um, my focus in IDS is on standards of living. So I've taken you know, more econ classes than, than most people in IDS. And I think in econ we have a tendency to really view people as statistics. And whether you're doing economic research or any other type of field work, it's really important to view humans as humans and not as numbers, um, or you're never going to know whether the research that you're gathering um, or the evaluation that you're doing, whether you're getting accurate, real information or not. Um, it's also about forming effective channels of communication. When you, um, when you really get to know a person, you can understand how they communicate, because everybody communicates differently. And if you want 
effective communication, and you want real answers from people, you have to know how they specifically communicate. So you have to have gone to that level with them, where you can read their facial expressions, you can read their body language. Um, and the last part is just judging the success of any project. Um, and that's you know a very standard thing, but it's very important because otherwise, what's the point? If we don't know if we were successful or not, then you know we could just keep doing the wrong thing over and over again. <laughs> so project evaluation. Why is project evaluation so important? Um, there's three main things that, that I see in this. The first one is uh, deciding whether you met your goal. So say your goal is improving access to nutrition. Um, so evaluating at the end of the whole process, however long that may be, whether you met the goal of improving access to nutrition. Um, the second half of that is evaluating whether you did it in the right way. And by that I mean whether you did it in a sustainable, culturally appropriate way, um, because you can have a sustainable project that's not successful. And by that I mean you can have a project that, um, that is solid, that the community is going to maintain for various reasons, whether from outside influence or pressures or whatever it may be. But if you've done more damage along the way than good, um, I wouldn't call it a success. Uh, so, so yeah, so evaluations are extremely important, but they're getting more and more challenging. And especially in the type of work that I've been doing the past three years, I think the reason for that is that we're moving kind of from this model of, of infrastructure where we have kind of, we go into the community and, and we give um, a grant to build the trades. Um, moving from that towards a more empowerment model where, um, where the community, instead of deciding to build the trains, will decide that they want to form a women's group and talk about gender issues or form a youth group and do trash pickups in the community. And that raises a very interesting question of how do you evaluate something like empowerment? How do you evaluate the level that, that somebody has been empowered through a project or through the process? Um, so the way that Amigos, the organization I've been working with, the way that we try to evaluate these very intangible project, project results is through participatory evaluations. And that entails a lot of different things. It can take on a lot of different forms, but um, one form is the meeting I described earlier where you're like sitting in a circle with a bunch of people and you're drawing pictures about your feelings. Um, it's very tricky to, to turn that into a report. But especially in this model of, of like talking about your feelings and not just collecting data when you're going from quantitative to qualitative, um, you have in Honduras what we call pena, which is a really big problem and it's not meant in, um, in a derogatory way, it's more just like a general timidness, shyness, um, and specifically in the evaluation context, it's an unwillingness to talk about anything that could hurt my feelings or anything that's, that's along the lines of negative, constructive feedback. So you, you hear all the positive stuff, but you don't hear anything about what you're doing wrong. And that's really frustrating. Um, and along the lines of, of Pena, some challenges that this brings up is just the general inability to, to get accurate information. So um, if somebody's not telling you that you're doing something wrong, they're probably not telling you what you're doing right. Because, you know, it's, I think that we're, we're at the point where we really, it's impossible to do everything right. And, um, and I think everyone's aware of that, but when people are telling you over and over again, no, everything's fine, no, you're doing everything right, no, this is great, we love working with the organization, you start to believe it. And whether they do love working with the organization or not is kind of beside the point. It's, you get stuck in this rut if nobody ever tells you you're doing something wrong, where you can't make yourself improve. There's nothing constructive about it. Um, so, so again, going back to, to my experiences and evaluations, I started getting really frustrated, felt like I wasn't, um, I wasn't really hearing the truth, and, and I started thinking about relationships and how uh, my volunteer's host father had placed so much value on the relationship above any of the other